Welcome guys back to the video on Greek banana strategy game or as you know strategic banana. Today we're gonna be making a new Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial. Well I'm doing this for to you know show to other people so then they can learn to play Hearts of Iron as I when I play with them I have to keep repeating the same stuff over and over again so I'm, I may upload this to YouTube but if I don't well who cares right? But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be making a new tutorial after every DLC release, well, every major DLC release, of course, for for Hearts of Iron, uh, because you know people need to know how to play, how to play the game. So to do this, we're gonna I mean, playing as Germany, as I would say, and most people would say this is the, probably the most the. The base country, the, the country you should first play before playing anything else. As one, there's a lot of opportunities for, to expand all around you. Two, it's really, it has a clear cut direction, it's really easy to do. And three, um, three, it's like you don't you don't need to do too much against the AI on regular. You can even play on civilian, right? Civilian's really easy. That will, that may help beginners. Uh, I don't know if you get, uh, some people may want it. I would say as your first game, leave it on historical. Leave the game rules the same, so don't even click on this button. And uh, press start. Yeah. Uh, don't do Iron Man when you first start. I'm telling you now. Iron Man, for starters, is terrible because it doesn't do auto saves. And when you fail, you will be, you'll have to restart from the beginning. So what I'm telling you is look at what you're doing and um, just look at what you're doing. Just so then you could restart. If, if you if you start failing, you could restart. So, first thing, we have to explain these stuff on the top, right? Okay. So first thing, uh, here's your flag, right? The, here's the big flag. Of course, uh, due to you know, product going to be nice, doesn't have the actual German flag. It has this flag right here. So we click on that, right? And it shows you this screen, this political screen. So as you can see here, right here is your nice leader. Mine is Mr. Mustache Man. We g or Mr. Helter, uh, we got right here. We have uh, this button called National Focus. You click on this. Um, this is the first thing you do in every game. And then you go. And then if you be, if you come here, you see this big thing. This big thing. If you sc you can scroll out to see it to see it better. You see this big thing, and you're like, oh my god, what 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 do they do? What am I doing here? Well, this is pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty simple to categorize as Germany. Uh, what it is. This is this is what it's called a National Focus, right? And uh, there's different sections to this, like uh, different focus to different things, give you different stuff, give you like reasons to attack other people, which you need to actually declare war. You got okay, but the first thing there's the uh, industry focus tree. Uh, actually, before I go into this, I should guys, I should actually say that I'm not going to be discussing any meta, so I'm not going to be saying like, oh, okay, this is you should be doing this because of the meta. No, uh, I, I, I like people building their own meta, so I, I, I would not. Especially when you're a new player, I would not recommend uh, looking for the meta. So what I would, so what I would do, uh, so anyway, this is the economy branch. This is where you get like your fact, your factories, and two, there's two different kinds of factories in the game. There's military factories and there's civilian factories. Civilian factories is what you build stuff with. Like, let's say you wanted to build more railroads, right? So you need civilian factories, and then you have military factories, which you know you build gun and planes and tanks with them so in a different those of those are two different tabs but I'll, I'll, sh I'll go more detail later but that's what you need to know for now so uh, we got of course there's it gives you, all these give you different stuff like let's say for your plan gives you uh, two a hundred percent research bonuses for industry there's research but uh, yeah basically gives you but a couple research buffs it it, all, it, le it lets you it doesn't give you but it lets you hire this dude I'll show you how to hire him later and it he, this dude gives you certain buffs, like these focuses give you different stuff, right? Then you have the air focus tree. The air focus tree is basically just does it doesn't really do too much, but you can get some air experience. You know, there's experience in this game, but that's something different. I'll talk about it later. We have air bases and stuff. This is pretty. You could basically ignore this, except if you want the research buffs, you, you just ignore this. Then there's army innovations. This basically gives you a couple of, uh, it could give you a couple of chiefs of army, we could hire a couple more research buffs, 
But then there's the big thing. Okay, this is the second biggest thing. They should, you should, the two focuses you should definitely go for is this one and this one. In this, you need the factories, and this one, you need to do the, to get the war goals or, or what you should know them as as the reasons you get to declare wars. For example, if I wanted to go declare war on the Netherlands, right? Oh, I can't. Why? No war justification. You can you can get a war justification two different ways. One through a war through justifying a war goal, which takes time. Uh, it requires political power and requires retention, or through focuses. And the way you do this is you go down your focus. So, for example, uh, one one focus with the war goal is Danziger War. Basically, it gives Poland uh, an event that uh, they either ex give you Danzig, this province right here, or you get a war goal to declare war on them. And yeah, that's basically what that is. But anyway, there's there's that's not the only focus. Let's say Rhineland. You see this red thing here? Yeah, that is the Rhineland demilitarized zone. That mean a uh, demilitarized zone means you can put move troops in here. So to get rid of that, you need to do the Rhineland. By the way, guys, there's a completely uh, alt history path here, but you should just ignore that for now. You should just play historical history helter. So what you should start? I, I mean, most people say you should start off with industry. I guess we could start off with industry. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, there's a bunch of focuses here you could keep doing, right? So, that's that, right? Uh, that's the focus sheet. That, I think that's enough for you to know as the focus sheet. Then you have these things called national spheres. These are basically like buffs for your country specifically. So, for example, uh, general staff. The German general staff was responsible for the continuous study of all aspects of war, including the, jo the drawing up and reviewing of plans of for mobilization or campaign. The con contributed to a higher level of organization in the army. This specific to Germany is a starting one. You could get more national spirits to doing focuses, but that those are your starting ones. You have some countries have starting ones, some don't. Depends on how developed the country is by the developers, right? Uh, so basically that that's national spirits. And you have this. As Germany you have faction called the Axis to see your factions you press on this star and then it shows up here. Nothing and you don't really have to worry about that right now. Then after, then lower than that, there's fascist. There's uh, this thing. You don't have to worry about it. Just as you're fascist, when you're fascist, you can you get you can justify war goals and stuff. Uh, on the base game, uh, you need the uh, world tension to justify to justify people except you're fascist or communist. If you're that, you could justify at any world tension if you have political power. So yeah, that that's that. Uh, then you have these three buttons at the start of the game. You don't have to worry about them, but there's occupied territories. Which you basically territories that you occupy, they're not your cores. Core basically states that basically are German. You may, you could say that like that no not the German that they're your country. Like if if you have a core state gives you manpower and stuff, while non core state like let's say uh, uh, Kahum to the to British does give you manpower, but it gives you less than a regular core. Also. It div it doesn't give you it it gives you less factories and resources if you don't have as a core. Uh, you can only get cores through focus trees at this point in the game. Like at this at, at the kind of development stage it's at, so you can only get cores through focus trees. And if you can't, you're just gonna start to stay as a calling forever. There's a thing called uh, uh, compliance and resistance. If you get com the more compliance you get, the more like the more manpower and uh, stuff you'll get from your non-core states. And resist is basically how much the people want to kill you for occupying their land. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Then collaboration governments, you don't have to worry about that. And then managed subjects, because Germany, you don't have to worry about that. Then you have laws and government. These things are basically like your, like, remember your political advisor telling you about, like, this dude? Yeah, this is where you hire him. These are your political advisors. These dudes, if you hire them, give you specific buffs or debuffs that help your country to succeed like for example if you have 150 po you need 150 political power for most of these dudes for some dudes like this dude you need only need 75 if you unlock him you get them in to the government uh, let me just get 150 to show you guys so you have 150 political power um, so you click here and by the way you should not use this these are console commands so nothing to worry about there let's say we click this dude now you have plus 10 percent to military construction speed Plus 10% to dockyard, basically how you build ships, and plus 10% to fuel saddles where you store fuel. There you go. Uh, these things right here, these three, 
these are specific these are specific like conscription conscription is like how much of your population you want to be in the army so uh, if you are to disarm you're only going to get one percent of your total population in the army and the more you scroll up the more you're going to get in the army you're going to get maximum 25 percent here you could get and some focuses give you also more recruitable all, more percentages so that's that uh lim trade law is basically how much how much you want to trade with people so like here there's the trade i'm going to say i'm going to tell you more about trade later but basically this is like you have resources right these are your resources uh you specific you have a specific amount of them locked into trading and when you want to trade and for you if the, the higher this law is the more locked into trading and you can't use them so people must buy them or they're useless and uh, but it, the more higher up you, it gives you more buffs and being lower down so at the start of the game i recommend you try to go to free trade when you have the political power of course but i mean yeah then you have partial mobilization and then you have a economy law this is basically like how prepared you are for war the more you are the the less debuffs you have to building stuff the less consumer goods which i'm going to talk about later what they are you have and uh yeah basically that's that and then you have research and production this is you don't really have to worry about this too much it's pretty useless except the theorist which gives you more arm experience I'll say what arm experience is later but these basically give you a bunch of research buffs and for and for also gives you some buffs to your units like let's say if i want to get porsche as my heavy tank designer it gives me plus 10 plus 10 plus 15 percent to my armor research speed plus five percent armor to my tanks and plus five heart attack and then we got military staff military staff is basically like your chiefs of army like let's say we want more let's say we want a chief of army right uh we if we, if we get a flange harder we're gonna get plus 10 percent attack which is of course good which is great right and then we got chief of navy chief of air force you know it gives you the same stuff and then you got military high command which it's basically three of these dudes over oh, over here and they give you all different buffs and if and when you get them you get those buffs right so that's basically this thing now let's go to these top things right here so this is political power to hire these dudes here and do decisions you need political power political power you get over over time through uh to tick every day like i get 1.43 political power per day and it, it just sticks up over time you could get up you could get more through focuses specific like for example for dual line i get plus 120 political power but after the start of the, after the start of the game political like uh, by the late game political power political power gets pretty useless so you shouldn't really be looking at that too much after like let's say 1940 but then you should but then you should political power doesn't really matter then we have stability stability is basically how stable your nation is and uh, basically stability doesn't do too much except give you some buffs if you have high and if you have low it gives you debuffs so for me because of 84 percent stability you get plus six percent political power gain minus 3.4 percent consumer goods plus 30 percent or 13.6 percent factory dockyard output so nice buffs right and then you have war support war support is basically how much your people want to fight the enemy and it's basically it kind of works the same as stability except it gives you different buffs and debuffs and stability does uh basically if you have high war support it gives you like better defense and attack on core territory and like better mobilization speeds basically how fast your soldiers get raised after you after you conscript more of them into the army better certainty limit meaning like you they need to take more cities from you for you to give up basically you don't you don't really control when you give up it's like it's like a mechanic where there's this bar and you have to control a certain amount of cities victory points for and if you control and if you don't control enough of them you die you basically die you go into a peace conference and you die so yeah so, you be, so this is pretty good as well you should, but it's not as important as this this is more important this is because the factory and docker up is really important for your industry then you have manpower manpower is basically uh manpower here on the, on this thing is basically manpower reserve so like you have your uh, manpower in the army which is if you click here and here it shows you the manpower in the army and then you have manpower and reserve manpower and reserve you know you should have manpower and reserve because if you don't right, well what awesome. will end up happening is you can't replace your guys so you'll start losing strength and like you won't have enough men and then you'll die and then you have so manpower is really important and the only way to increase is of course increase the conscription or increase the people that come in the army which is this percentage right here and the uh, uh this is limited conscription that 
that says 2.5% uh, of electoral corp population that's the amount of people of your nation in the army so yep that's that then there's factories which basically uh, tell you how many factories you have fuel which is really important if you don't have fuel you get major debuffs for your planes your tanks and your navy of course because you can't run a plane without without fuel you can't run a tank without fuel and you can't run a ship without fuel so yeah fuel is really important to get fuel you need to have more oil you can either get oil through trading or through having it in your territory so yeah then we have convoys is basically like things that you trade with so if you if i want to trade with the us i need to use convoys but if i want to trade with france i don't need to because they're right next to me then we have command power command power is basically uh things that gives they give your generals upgrades i'll talk about generals later and uh, also gives you sometimes you could do certain decisions but this is pretty useless you could mostly ignore most of the time then you have army experience which basically it makes you it lets you edit division templates which you won't really need to as germany at this when you're playing when you're doing this for the first time but it, this gets pretty important if you want to play multiplayer that you need to are to adjust your templates so yeah, and also, also if you can, you could also upgrade your equipment with it. But yeah, I'll, I'll just say ignore them. The naval and air war is kind of the same way, except uh, you don't you don't modify your ship templates because you know you don't have a specific. It's they basically all they do is you they get to get to get better ships with them. So these are kind of these things right here. You don't have to worry about them too much. Then you have decisions. Decisions is basically like. Oh, uh, let's say uh, demand increase trade. Dutch. This is like a mechanic. You don't really have to worry about this. You can just let the British win. Nobody cares. I mean, you should like if you if you get the game, you could start worrying about this. But for now, you don't need to. Uh, then there's like polit. You got like pol you. Their default uh, this is like political effort and, and propaganda effort. These just don't really do anything. You really shouldn't do them. Except you could do war propaganda if you don't have really high. Uh, war support and stuff, but then there's like you, most countries have some unique decisions, and Germany has the MIFO bills. Basically, if you click this or remove this national spirit, so uh, remove all these great buffs that you get, but also removes the minus political power that you get. This plus 20, by the way, doesn't give you more political power, it minus political power. So I'm losing 0 0.2 political power a day from MIFO, but I, I'm gaining from other stuff, so it'll be fine. But the more this, but as you see here, there's like this countdown. There's like a time timer. If this thing comes here, it'll ring you, giving and it, and it changes it by giving you by increasing the political power cost. Which at some point you should, it cancels. This thing cancels automatically when you go to war. So I don't. You should really not worry about this. So the issues for Germany aren't really important. Then you have the intelligence agency. The uh, intelligence agency basically what it does is like have you get a couple spies, you put them in the enemy's territory. Uh, you get to see what they have and stuff, and you also get to do certain operations. But as first time playing, I think you should probably ignore this. It's not really that important, although it does get pretty useful sometime. Then you have research. Re research is pretty simple to grasp. There's like different tabs. There's infantry, support companies, armor, artillery, land doctrine, naval, naval doctrine, air, air doctrine, engineering, and industry. Basically, these here are for your land army for you to be able to, you know, these give you better, these things give you bonus, these things on the top give you bonuses. Uh, you, you could see, you could get more in depth with them, but basically the infantry tab gives you more bonuses to your infantry and cavalry and mountaineers and whatever you want to use. These are special forces like mountaineers, better mountains, power troopers that are able to power drop, and marines better at landing. Yeah, so these don't really these are your guns these are support equipment basically like gives you more buffs for your infantry so oh uh, yeah this infantry is pretty simple to grasp support companies these are like think like like uh, let's say engineer companies are like the people that dig your defenses and stuff for your guys so if this is where uh, modifying your division template comes in the, so let's say I want to edit my template. These things, engineer companies, give me plus 24 defense, plus 4.35 breakthrough, and like a couple stuff gives me more entrenchment, which of course basically gives you makes you be able, makes you be able to build uh, defenses easier. So support companies basically support your infantry that give you more buffs and stuff. Give me of armor, tanks. 
it's, it's not hard to crash. Light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks. Well, I, I don't think that's really hard to grasp. Artillery, anti-air. There's anti-air. Anti-air and anti-tank against the air you don't really need. You basically only need this artillery. Artillery is really strong, gives you a lot of soft attack, and if you have it in your infantry division, it makes them really strong. Uh, what other beasts do you have? We have uh, land auction. This is basically like what your army will follow as like what the doctrine of your army will be like if your army is gonna uh, just roll forward with tanks or if they're gonna use infantry first before going with tanks or whatever you wanna whatever it needs to be like there's four the main doctrines tank okay i'm gonna explain them simply good for tanks good for infantry good for defending good for m good for nothing or good maybe somewhat good for defending Eh, I don't know, this one's not really good. The, none of the, basically, the good ones is this one for infantry, this one for tanks. But there's also these two. Hmm, I don't want to do them for our you, but you may do them if you want. Then you have naval doctrine as the first, as as an, as a player first getting to this game. As Germany, you should definitely ignore this. Don't even touch it. It's too complicated. Naval doctrine is goes with the navy, so you can ignore it as well. Then you have air. Air is basically, you know, planes, fighters, casts. Bombers, more bombers, heavy fighters, naval bombers. So basically, all you need as Germany's fighters and cast. Just go research these, and you'll be fine. Uh, then you have air doctrine. Uh, what your planes will do, similar to the army doctrine. Uh, then you have engineering. This basically like gives you research buffs if you do radios. It gives you reinforce reinforcement rate. Basically, your infantry will get into a battle quicker. And then you have like research speed, research speed, research speed. Basically, all you need to know about this gives you research speed. There's also nukes here and rockets, but these are later in the game. And then we have industry. Industry is basically factories and stuff, how to improve them. This is construction speed. These give you more factory output. This gives you more production cap. So basically, a bunch of buffs for your guys. And here, you also can get more fuel. It gives you it increases your fuel gain. This one increases your fuel refineries and rubber refineries. So yeah, that's basically that. Also, to research, there's like research ahead of time penalties. So you see these uh, dates here? These basically tell you when you should research them or you're going to get a penalty. So if I, want, if I want to research, let's say, night vision, it says in 1943, right? So it'll give you a seven year uh, penalty to research. It. So it'll take 1,872 days. But if I do this, that's for 1918, it's perfectly in time. So I can perfectly research it without any problems. As a start of research in Germany, you should do uh, support equipment, basic machine tools, construction, and engine. And this is the basics. Most countries don't start with four, and if you don't start with four, you just do construction, basic, basic machine, and electronic. But we, I, when you start with four, I say you should go. I say you should okay. go do stuff. Huh? What? But anyway, uh, what I was gonna say is, yeah. So after that, we have uh, diplomacy. Diplomacy, just ignore. It's nothing. This tab is basically ignored. There's, there's nothing here. Then you have trade. I was talking about earlier. These are all the resources you have. Uh, there's extracted. These are how many resources you actually extract get from your nation. Imported. These are the resources you're importing right now. Export these are the resources that are stuck on the market and you can't use and the only thing that they're useful for is people buying them They give you factories and then you have needs basically what you're using with for with your mills to build stuff So as you can see here you have two oil You, you have two oil you have 93 aluminum you're lacking five rubber you have 11 tungsten You have 250 steel and you have to chrome it. so you let so you're lacking rubber right and you're like oh no now my now I, I won't be able to build stuff as quickly. Don't well, don't worry. You can just go here, click let's say on British Malaya and press, and send them a couple factories. Every time you want to trade, just click on this. I'll show you the exact amount you need to have. Press send, and that thing will arrive to you, and you'll get it as imports. When you don't, when you have more than you need, you just click back. So because you don't need anymore, so it, so you don't trade with them. Then after that, you have the construction, or finally a construction. As I said, military factories build stuff. Civilian factories, no. Military factories build guns and ships. G no, build 
guns and planes and tanks. Dockyards build ships, and civilians build factories. So, when you're starting off the game, you should just build some civilian factories. Okay. Uh, then you have synthetic refiners. These basically give you uh, oil and rubber without like uh, manual, like you, like human-made oil and rubber. Build, building a lot of these will give you a lot of oil and rubber without actually having any in your nation. So, they're good to have. Fuel silos build fuel. Rockets are for rockets. Building rock rockets are for building rockets. And uh, nuclear reactors for building nukes. Then you have uh, infrastructure over here. Infrastructure is basically how many roads and railroads and things you have. The more you have, the more reads you're going to get. The faster units are going to move, the more supply you're going to have. So yeah, then you have air bases. Air bases. What, what's so hard about air bases? Anti-air. Basically, you put up some anti-air, so then people don't bomb. It's harder for you to get bombed. Simple enough. Then you have forts for the for land. Basically, these are when you attack, they get a debuff because you have forts. Coastal forts uh, for defending your coast and ports and or naval bases are ports. This just ignore. Never do this never do this it's terrible so just ignore that here you have consumer goods consumer goods is basically how much of your civilian factories your population are using you know they're using like if let's say they need shoes or something they use these factory these consumer good factories to get their shoes but these but it's but consumer goods are really bad for you because consumer goods like you have less saves to build with so you should get this number as low as possible this uh, percentage amount and then, yeah, that's basically that for construction. Then you have production. This is basically where you build your tanks, planes, and whatever. So, I have 28 military factories and 10 dockyards. I, I'm only using 20 military factories right now. So, I could just click here, and I can and I can send more factories to building these specific things. There's also a production efficiency. Basically, it is how good your factories are at building this. And the more good they are, the more faster you're going to build them. So, if let's say if I want to send a bunch of factories on this... Those new factories are not going to be very good at building, at building that thing because they just got, they just got, they just got assigned to them, so they've never learned it before, so they're not going to be very good at them. But over time, they get better, and you know they start learning it more. So yeah, you just assign them whatever you want. But like, if you want more planes, get more planes. If you want more motorways, buy basically more trucks, get more trucks. Yeah, these are pretty simple to learn. Then you have uh, ships. Yeah, just leave the default ships on. Let them build. And do whatever you want with them after. After you... So, yeah, that's basically that. Then you have these buttons here. This basically... So, except for your, you know, the things that you start off the game with. Like this... The, your starting uh, production lines. You could add more. Like, let's say, I want some armored cars. You just click. You just click this button. You click here. You got some armored cars. They don't start without any factories if you don't have any, a, any for them to use. So you just put them here, you give, you take a factory off then so then they can start building. But yeah, that's basically that. T there's the same for tanks and planes and ships. Um, yeah, that's production. Then we have recruit and deploy. This is where you get more, basically more divisions. Do you want more guys in the field? You press this train button and train them all. Train them all. Reinforcements here, basically how many, how many guns your actual army in the field has. Uh, pressing these buttons gives them low priority for guns and like things, medium priority for giving them guns, high priority for giving them guns. Then you have upgrades. How, um, basically, when you research guns, yep, they're. When you research more stuff, like let's say I research this gun, uh, the, those guns are better than the other gun than the guns we had before. So you're gonna need to upgrade them. Basically, you keep these guns that you already have, but when you start building these guns, these guns will slowly move the guns that you have in the army, the worst guns, from uh, from the guy from the guys that have them into the reserve, which you're gonna which you're gonna be the next step. Operations. If you want to do stuff with spies, like how many guns and stuff they have is here, and garrisons. Basically, what is like what is up. What is making people not want to hate you on territories you occupy? The guys that stop the people that want to hate you in the, in the occupied territories from blowing stuff up. Yeah, so that's that. These things are your templates or your divisions. You have infantry, 
each each country starts with different divisions. Infantry divisions. Okay, as Germany you have these five templates. Infantry divisions are infantry with engineer companies and artillery. So pretty good divisions. The only thing I would modify is give them more support companies and give them more infantry. Then you have tank panzer divisions or tank divisions. These are your tanks and how they're fielded. They have two motorized and five tank divisions. When you have tank divisions, you should make sure you have a good amount of organization because that, because if you don't, your attacks will break down pretty quickly as you need organization to attack and move around. And let's say your organization is two, you're going to attack for three seconds and then your unit will stop attacking because the organization can't fight. Because without a... Okay, I'm going to just read what it says here. Organization indicates combat readiness and how orga organized the unit is. A unit with no organization can't fight or move efficiently. Basically that. I think that's a pretty good explanation. Then you have motorized. Basically, a bunch of trucks. Do you want to have unit, your units on trucks? Yes or no? Then build more of these if you want them. In real life, Germany, most countries didn't have a lot of these dudes because they cost fuel that countries didn't have. So they would use mostly these guys. Then you have mountaineers. Special forces that are better in the mountains. And cavalry. It sucks. Except for garrisoning. And there you go. That's basically that. Then you have logistics. Basically how many guns you have in reserve. And how many more your guys need in the field. Or are training. How many... The, these guys are training by the way. They are not in the field yet. Um, the, these things are... These are guns. So let's say you're lacking 20,000 guns. To get those 20,000 guns, you need to build them. They're, built, they're getting built over time. This, num this negative number will slowly go down and then turn into a positive number. When it turns into a positive number, that means you have enough guns for the army and you can build more divisions. Yay! Hooray! And it goes for everything. Go basically goes for everything except ships because ships, you know, they're, s they're individual. You don't really send them. So that's basically the, the basics on this part. Now, let me start learning. Now you guys will learn how to... What are these? These are notifications. So for example, outdated equipment production. Oh no, my ships are outdated. Don't worry. Nobody cares. Uh, so basically these... So basically these like notify you when you can do stuff. And like some stuff you could... Like some of them are useful, some of them are not. Depends on your situation. Unassigned divisions. Ah yes. Finally. An army has been created. Basically, these things right here are your armies. Base, want to conquer people? You put them into an army. You click this button, a front line. Click on country. You click on this button or this button. Basically, go this direction. Like go this direction, if you can. Okay, that's basically what they are. And if you want to do it manually, like you could just click on the division. Go, go there by right clicking then you can also assign a commander oh look level 4 commander good command earn one rommel with all his nice traits this for command command power does its thing you could just click here and do whatever like you could upgrade them you could give them oh look you're now a fortress buster oh plus 15 percent attack on forts oh yes perfect there you go uh, armies are pretty good to get used to. You should probably have your tanks and motorized in a different army. You don't have over over the amount of divisions a general could handle. It shows them down here. It could handle 24. If you ha it could ha he could handle 24 divisions. If you don't have the, that amount of divisions, if you have more than that, what will end up happening is the buffs that this general gives you will be less. So you should probably make sure you don't you have armies of 24 right. as most generals have a maximum of 24 so just move these two okay okay uh and then you and then the, and now the last part oh there's also army these things are basically right over armies and what they do is like they're basically do you give them armies right, so you just you give them the arm you give them armies and uh, what they do you can make bigger front line like us like you I don't think you want to have to put one front line, two front lines, three front lines for all your guys. So to make this quicker, and order for you to have as many front lines, what you could just do is 
click on this dude, click this, shift click on the border, and now all of these troops now use that single front line instead of having to assign them basically for armies, or for every army specifically. So that's a useful tool to have, and also it gives their army extra, it gives them, that guy gives even more buffs on top of the buffs that the general gives you, so you should probably have both of them. Then the last thing you need to worry about basically are these two things here. Your army, your navy and your, your army you don't need to worry about. But then you have your navy. Your navy, just shift click on all of them. Press this button that merges your fleets. Click to assign a commander. Give them a commander. Tell them to go to the sport. And just ignore them. And then you have air. Air is basically planes, right? So you just shift click on all of them. And at the start of the game, I say you delete them since you don't really need to use them. Bada bing, bada boom. If you okay, I think that'll be the end of the tutorial. If any, you need any more, anything else, you could just comment in the comment section below. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and see you at some point for another video. Goodbye.